I'm going to show you this verse in Matthew 25, just on this issue of loving one another. Uh, <clears throat> we'll just read from verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from, the, from, one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed are my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer, saying, Lord, when saw we thee unhungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was unhungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in, took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee unhungered, and a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Now, a lot of people have issue with Matthew 25 because they just think, oh, Matthew 25 just supports work salvation so much. And just remember like what I talked about in, in Psalm 92. We have to understand Old Testament passages in light or Old Covenant passages in light of the New Covenant. Because even though this passage is in the New Testament, what we call the New Testament scriptures in Matthew it is still in the time of the Old Covenant because the New Testament did not start until Jesus died and rose again. So he's still speaking in like these dark sort of parables and stories and, and referring to this works-based righteousness because that's the Old Covenant. But we know under the New Covenant, the righteousness is by faith. So that's why when it says he separates the sheep and the goats and the righteous from the unrighteous, he's not separating us by our works because otherwise we'd all be goats. He's separating us based on our faith. Right, So that's the, the, the separation of the sheep and the goats. And the reason why he's saying that the righteous will be on the right and the left is because we have the righteousness by faith and the, the, the goats are those that do not believe, that are not saved. But what I wanted to refer to here, it's interesting that he says, you know, when I was hungry and blah, 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 and all these things, and then the righteous shall answer, so, Lord, when saw we thee hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Uh, verse 40, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Now this is a very profound passage, just because it shows that when we do things for the family of God, we are actually doing things for Jesus. Why is that? Well, because number one, remember we're the body of Christ. So we're the body of Christ. So when we minister to Jesus physically, we don't minister to, to him because he's in heaven. We minister to his body. And that's why Jesus can say that, you know, we, we are doing it to him, even though we do it to the least of these, my brethren. And isn't it interesting, verse 40, where he says, you do it unto my brethren. Remember last week, we, we talked about being the family of God. And remember that passage that we went to where he says, hey, your mother, your brethren, your sisters stand without seeking to speak with thee. And he said, behold, you know, the people that do the will of my father, these are my, my brother and my, my mother and my, my sisters. So there again, supporting the fact that we are the family of God, we are his brethren, we are his body. And that's why when you serve another brother or sister in Christ, you are not only serving that brother or sister in Christ, you are actually serving Jesus. Now, now that's, that's, I think that's really profound because, you know, you, you, may, you may like do something for somebody and they may not necessarily like appreciate it or may not, you know, you know, whatever, but you still can take comfort in the fact that you are serving the Lord Jesus. And it, and it gives you a different perspective on things because it's like with your job. If you realize 
that your job is a spiritual activity because you need to work hard and you need to work and serve your boss as if you're serving Jesus, then it'll change your mentality at work. You don't just work hard when the boss is looking. You don't just work hard for money. You don't just work hard for recognition. You can work hard because you're serving the Lord Jesus just like we do with the rest of our life. Um, so it'll change how you treat one another. Because let's say somebody needs to move house and you want to help. Man, you're not just helping that person move house. You're helping Jesus move house. You know, if somebody needs you know, help with something else. I mean, apply whatever situation you want. But it's just a very profound truth there that when we serve one another, that is actually the practical way that we minister to Jesus Christ, like he says here in Matthew 25. So there are a couple of things that, that we can take from this. I mean, because we're the body of Christ and because we serve Jesus by serving the body of Christ, it's just interesting that the body of Christ can actually be thought of as a way Jesus actually does work in this world, if that makes sense. Because if we serve Jesus, that's his body. When the body does things, we're doing things as though Jesus is doing it in the world. So the fact that um, believers are Christ's body, there's some implications to that. I mean, number one is, you know, Christ, Christ can bless through believers. So sometimes when you get help from another brother or sister in Christ, that is one way Christ is actually using his body to help you. Because sometimes people are too proud, I don't know, or they're too embarrassed or for whatever reason to receive help from another person. You know, I'll give you an example. Like, you know, somebody might need money, right? But then... They're too embarrassed to receive money from another brother or sister in Christ because they're like, oh, no, 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 I don't take your money. I'm just going to trust God. But then this is, how, this is how Christ is helping you. You know, that's why the church is to help the needy. This is Jesus is using men to carry out his will and to help somebody. So if somebody needs help, but yet they're too embarrassed or too, too proud to receive help from another person, that may be how Jesus Christ is helping you. You know, so Christ can bless through believers. You know, Christ can provide through believers. Christ can be served through believers. Christ can be served by believers, right? Uh, you know, Christ can, can speak through believers. You know, sometimes Jesus Christ will speak to you through his body. You know, Christ can be fellowshipped with through believers. So that's why we talk about, you know, if you love God, why would you not love uh, being together with his people? Um, but another thing, you know, Christ can be rejected through believers. That's why when we go and knock the doors and people reject us, they're not only rejecting you, they are rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ because you are there as part of the body of Christ. 